We're going to be simplifying radical expressions today. It's considered hard, but it's very similar in a way. The idea of it is very similar to um, reducing or simplifying fractions. Here I had 20 over 45. That is not simplified. A correct answer, if you're giving a fraction answer, is always simplified. It's always reduced to its simplest form. So 20 45ths, I had to divide both the numerator and the denominator by five in order to reduce that to four ninths. And then that would be correct. It's the same idea for radicals. Suppose you've done a lot of work with your radicals. You're ready to put your answer in. The square root of 250. And that's the first problem here. This is not the correct answer because it's not reduced. Since this is a square root, I have to find a perfect square in 250. And 250 equals 25 times 10, and 25 is a perfect square. But suppose you don't know that from the beginning. So what you need to do is break down 250. And any number that ends in a zero is a number that 10 will go evenly into. But also five will go evenly into it. So what I can do here is I can calculate 250 divided by five. And that's 50, so I'm going to come over here and say five times 50. And then 50, if that's divided by five, gives me five times 10. And I already know what 10 is. 10 is five times two. So in this way, if I don't already know that I have a 25 here in 250, I can instead do this. The square root of five times five times five, there they are there, five times five times five times two. Okay, this is, and I need to make this bigger. So I'm gonna come back out here. And that looks like it's the square root of 250 over that. So I'm going to erase that and write it again. I'm going to skip a line. All right, so if I don't know that 20, 250 equals that, then I could do what I just did, which is break down 250 and discover that 250 equals five times five times five times two. <clears throat> This is a square root. So it means I'm looking for something under here that's squared. So five times five is five squared. If five is multiplied by itself two times, it's squared. So I could write this as five squared. That would be these two times five times two. There's only one five 
and one two, so nothing is squared there. So that would be five times two, which is 10. Almost wrote 10, five times two. So I've got the square root of five squared times the square root of 10. Now, something we did yesterday is we applied rational um, exponents to radicals, excuse me, and also mentioned that there's an invisible index. This number is the index. All radical expressions have indices, that's the plural. Well, a square root has an invisible index too. So we can rewrite this with rational, with a rational index. Five to that two, and that two is divided by the index two. And there's a reason for doing this because I know that two over two is one. So the square root of five squared is five. Meanwhile, there is no perfect square in the square root of 10. So the answer to this problem, the square root of 250 is five times the square root of 10. Now, if you had already known that the square root of 250 can be broken down into 25 times 10. And if you know that 25 is a perfect square, you could have taken a lot less time. The square root of 25 is five. So you could have come up with the answer more quickly with fewer steps. But if you don't know, you can always use this method, and that will help you reduce numbers like 250, that is the square root of 250, to five times the square root of 10. We're gonna be doing that a lot. Let's do another one. The square root of 18. Let's do it the quick way and then the longer way. The quick way, of course, let me get that red line out of the way. The quick way to simplify the square root of 18, and this is number two, is to say, well, I know that 18 is 9 times 2, and 9 is a perfect square. So now you can separate that because these are multiplied into the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 9 is 3, so your answer is 3 times the square root of two. This is the proper way to write the square root of 18. Now suppose you don't know that. So you have to work it out. You have to say, okay, let's see, 18. What can I do here? Well, suppose I have 18. 
the last digit is an even number. Two will go into eight evenly. So I can divide 18 by two, and I'll get two times nine. Two will not go evenly into nine, and if you don't know that, all you have to do is divide nine by two, and you get a decimal. There aren't gonna be decimals if a number goes evenly into another number. So if two doesn't work, I go to three. Nine divided by three. Ha, that works. If nine is divided by three, it equals three. So three times three is nine. So the square root of 18 equals the square root of 3 times 3 times 2, which is the square root of 3 squared times 2, which is the square root of 3 squared times the square root of two. And I'll use rational powers here to break this down. There's an invisible two index. So th the square root of three squared is three to that two divided by the index two. And two over two is one, so that I've got three to the one times the square root of two. And three to the one is just three. Three times the square root of two. So either way, the long way or the short way, you can come up with the answer. So even if you don't know right off the top of your head, that 18, uh, the square root of 18 is the square root of nine times two. Or that 18 equals nine times two, you can always find it out easily. All right, now we're getting a little more difficult here. Hello, Miss, uh, can I see that? See what? The. Ah. Yeah. Sorry. Have you got it now? I'm coming. Yes, yeah, thank you. OK, good. Anybody else you want to ask a specific question about this? It's just about breaking things down. That's what factoring is. We're breaking things down. OK, this is problem number three in your homework. The square root of 300 times x to the fourth. Well, the first thing I do immediately is I separate the number part from the variable part. The square root of 300 times the square root of x to the fourth. Now, using rational powers, this is very easy. The square root of x to the fourth. Remember, there's an invisible two here. Can be rewritten as x to the four over two. 
and four divided by two is two. So this is X squared. X to the fourth is X squared. I mean, the square root of X to the fourth is X squared. So now all we have to do is work on 300. I, I've noticed that numbers can be a lot more difficult. Now, again, this all depends upon what you already know. If you already know that 300 is 100 times 3, and that 100 is a perfect square, it's 10 times 10, then this becomes incredibly easy. Miss, how you know like which two factors to use like 100 times 3? Well, I know. Um. Um, but so I'm going to say if you already know, and there are some people who do, um, then it's much easier. And if it's not, then we are going to break down 300. Okay. It, into its factors and work from there. So this is if you already know, you don't have to know, but if you do, then you'll have the square root of 100 times the square root of three times X squared, which we've already simplified because that was the easiest part. So the square root of 100 is 10, times x squared, and the only thing left under a radical is the square root of three. So this is the faster way to do this, and we now are gonna to go to the next sheet of paper and do it the slower way. So is the answer to that 10x squared to the... Um, Time, times the square root of three, yes. That is the answer. But now we're going to do it in a slower way. I'm still going to separate the number part from the variable part because really they're like, they're like two separate problems for a while, then you put them back together. So again, given what we worked on yesterday, I'm going to take this and say that the square root of X to the fourth is X to the four over two power which is x to the 2 power. And now the variable part is done. I'll come back to it later. Right now, we have to break down 300. Like Nikolai said, how do I just know that it equals 100 times 3? Well, suppose I don't. Then this is what you do. 300. A number that ends in a zero is a number that two will go evenly into. So the first thing I'm going to divide this by is two. 300 divided by two. Or I could say that, well, when there's a zero on the end, that means 10 will go evenly into it. And that is also true. But let's just keep doing it this way. Two, uh, two goes into 300 150 times. Now again, 150 has a zero. Let me get the larger viewer. Okay. 150 ends in a zero. So I know I can divide that by two. I'm going to do that. 
All I have to do is hit divide by two. Answer is the last number that was uh, achieved in the calculator. So it knows that it's dividing two into 150. Hit enter and I get 75. Now two will not go evenly into a number that ends in five, but five will. So I'm going to divide 75 by five. Oh, I didn't have to do that. Divided by five. There I go, 15. And once again, 15 ends in five, and that means five will go evenly into it. So 15 divided by five is five, and that leaves a three. So what I've just found out is that 300 equals two times two times five times five times three. And I'm going to write that down. Two times two times five times five times three. Now look at this. Two times two is two squared. Five times five is five squared times three. That's how I'm going to write the square root of 300. The square root of 300 equals the square root of two squared times five squared times three, which means it equals the square root of two squared times the square root of five squared times three. So, Remember your invisible two index. The square root of two squared is two to the two over two, which is one, times the square root of five squared, which is five to the two over two, which is one, times, oops, times the square root of three, which will not break down. How do I know it won't break down? Because this is the second root of three to the one, and if I used rational powers, it would be three to the one half. It's still got a fraction power, so it's not a perfect square. So for that reason, I see that the square root of 300 equals two times five times the square root of three, which is 10 times the square root of three. And for that reason, having already worked on the variable part, I know that the square root of 300, that was an ugly three, 300 times x to the fourth is going to be 10. And then x to the fourth, you remember the square root of x to the fourth is x squared, so it's not under the radical anymore. And then the part under the radical comes la la last. And here's your answer. So whether you work this the quicker way, 
or the shorter way just depends on well the quicker way or the longer way that just depends on the num on the knowledge that you bring with you into this so, so let, me, um, uh, let me bring this back up scroll so up what happened to the three raised to the one over a second one over two pole Oh, I was just saying that the square root of three is three to the one half power. Um, mm -hmm. If it's still got a fraction, then it's under the rat. It's it cannot be brought out from the radical. That's all. Okay. Good. This is very good to ask questions. Are there more? Okay, see what the next one is. Oh, now this is going to be interesting. In other words, it's going to be a challenge. Let's see, simplify by factoring. Assume that all, all expressions under radicals represent non-negative numbers. In other words, we don't have to worry about something we haven't talked about yet, which is the complex number system. We don't have to think about it right now. Okay, I'm gonna start here. This is the square root of 75 times a squared times b, which I'm going to write separately as the square root of 75 times the square root of a squared and you've probably learned now that you can use rational powers on that. And so the square root of a squared is a. But poor little b is the square root of b to the one power. The index is greater than that power. So that means what that meant which is the, that B will not come out from underneath the square root. It's stuck. But A squared did come out, so that's a good thing. Now, all we have to do is work on 75. Now, again, there's a shorter way and a quicker way. 75 is 25 times three. If you know that the square root of 75 is the square root of 25 times 3, and that 25 is a perfect square, then you can just write it like this. Which is 5 times the square root of 3. However, if you don't know, then I'm going to write 75 and break it down with the help of the calculator. Oh, and see, we already did have to break down 75. 75, okay, two will not go evenly into it, but five will for sure because the number ends in five. So 75 divided by 5, 5 is 15. 
15 divided by 5. Is 3. So here's what 75 equals. It equals 5 times 15. And then the 15 breaks down into 5 times 3. So I can write the square root of 75 as the square root of 5 squared, 5 times 5. Well, here, let me write it out the long way first. That might be better. 5 times 5 times 3. which is the square root of five squared times three, which is five, well, let's do this, the square root of five squared times the square root of three, and then the square root of 5 squared is 5 to the 2 over 2 power, which is 1. So this is 5 to the 1 power times the square root of 3. So the square root of 75 by itself is 5 times the square root of 3. Now all we have to do is put all this stuff back together. The square root of a squared, we could do that the long way. The square root of a squared is a to the 2 over 2 power. 2 over 2 is 1, so this is a to the 1 power, which is just a. So now writing all of this together, we're going to have the square root of 75a squared b equals five times, oh, the square root of 75 times the square root of a squared times the square root of b. This is five times the square root of three this is A, this is the square root of B, and here's what we do next. These are all multiplied together. This is even five times the square root of three. So I'm going to change the order, which is something you can always do when you multiply and when you add. You can change the order. So I'm going to write this as 5 times a times the square root of 3. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. No need to write it like that. Times the square root of 3 times the square root of b. So we'll have 5a. These are both square roots, so all I have to do is combine them. The square root of 3b. And this is your answer. 5a times the square root of 3 times b. Let me put a blue box around it. Okay, the 75 part, the square root of 75 is five, and that's a, a times. I could write that more neatly. I'm gonna do that. Five times 
the square root of three. And then times the square root of a squared, which is a. Times the square root of b. So we have these four numbers and variables multiplied together. I take everything that is not under the radical and put it together, and everything that is under a square root and put it together, and then combine them so that I have 5a times the square root of 3b. Hello. Discussion about this. There are two ways to look at this. It's a total pain, or it's a game, it's a puzzle. It's a puzzle whose goal, or the goal of which is to find all the perfect squares under the square root radical and pull them out. How good are you at the game? A lot in math can be viewed as a game. A famous mathematician named John Nash won the Nobel Prize for game theory. So the two do kind of go together. OK. Now. The puzzle continues. Problem number five in your homework. We have a multiplication problem. The square root of three times the square root of six. Well, on the surface, since they're both square roots, we could do what we did up here. That's just the square root of 3 times 6, which is the square root of 18. And oh yeah, we had this problem before. Okay, so then we would have to reduce or simplify the square root of 18 like we did before. So what can we do to avoid that? Two times nine. Square root of two times nine. Yeah, you're right. Nine times two, which is the square root of nine times the square root of two, which is three times the square root of two, um, so basically you just find um, the lowest factor with a, with a number that can be squared. Uh-huh, yes. Okay. But there's a sneakier way. There's a sneakier way to do this. You could also say this to yourself. Self, I happen to know that six is two times three. Or let's say three times two. Three times two. 
which means the square root of six can also be written as the square root of three times the square root of two. And look what you've got here. If we multiply these guys back together, we will have the square root of three times three times two, which is the square root of three squared times two, which is the square root of three squared times the square root of two. And by now we've gone through proving this so often with rational powers. The square root of three squared is three times the square root of two. So the square root of three times the square root of six, you can do it this way, or you can do it this way. Here we wait till after we multiply to break it down. And here we break it down along the way, so we don't have to do it later. We do it as we go. And either way will get you the right answer. Okay, wonder what comes next. Number six, same basic idea. Only these numbers are more complicated. The square root of 15 times the square root of 35. Let me write it here in case anybody's still copying that. The square root of 15 times the square root of 35. Well, you know what? We could multiply it all together and then break it down, but it's going to be a pretty big number. Let's see what it'll be. 15 times 35. We would have to break down 525. Well, 5. 525. Might be easier if we break it down along the way. Why don't we do that? Because 15 is easy and 35 is easy. Um, all you have to do is divide 5 into 35 because of that 5 on the end. 35 divided by 5 is 7. So, the square root of 15 times the square root of 35 is going to be 
that we have a perfect square. Five times five. So what I'm going to do is, uh, all I'm going to do, these are all multiplied. I'm going to change the order a little bit. I'm going to put my five squared right here because that's what five times five is. And then I'll multiply by three times seven, which is 21. So I'll have the square root of five squared times the square root of 21, which can't be broken down. There is no perfect square in 21 because it equals one three and one seven. So there's no perfect square in 21. However, the square root of five squared is five. So the answer here is five times, <clears throat> times the square root of 21. And you know a quick way you could check this for yourself. You can multiply, you, you'll get a decimal, but you can multiply the square root of 15 Hit the right arrow key. Now the multiplication key, square root of 35, and hit the right arrow key, and now hit enter. Okay, now, five times the square root of 21, it had better be the same exact answer. Whew, and it is. So your calculator can help you in checking to make sure your answer is correct. Personally, and this is just a personal choice, I think that doing it this way is easier. But I can also see some arguments from people who would say, no, it's easier this way. And I would say, OK, then do it that way. Make it the square root of 525 and break it down from there. Either way, you can get the right answer. Discussion about this. Question about this. Um, so if you do it the square root of 525 way, um, do you have to show working? Because when you put that in your calculator, you see the answer. Like when you put the square root of 525 in your calculator, you get five times the square root of 21. Well, but you don't. That's the problem. Or you don't have to show working. Um, if uh, let's do it, okay? Let's take the square root of five twenty-five and put it in the calculator. Mm -hmm. And that's the answer we get. It doesn't show you how it's broken down, and and this is the answer. This is the exact answer. Yeah, in now, in my calculator, it shows me five to the five times the square root of 21. You're kidding me. Yeah. That's great. Well, yeah. I mean, my math lab doesn't ask for work. <laughs> OK. What kind of calculator do you have? A Casio. A Casio, OK. Yeah. <clears throat> Something to keep in mind. Yeah. That's great. Okay, let's move along. 
same kind of problem here. Let me, um, in the interest of time, let me go to the end. There are 10. Let's do that one. That looks horrible, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I'll answer for you. Because I'm, I'm afraid we won't get to all of them. Okay, this is number 10. Number 10 in the homework. We have the square root of 12 times a to the fifth times b. So let's say b to the one times the square root of eight a to the sixth b to the fourth. Well, hmm, we could break them down separately or we could break them down together. I think this is what I'm going to do. You know, your, your brain, when you've got something like this, that's definitely a puzzle. Your brain is constantly clicking, click, 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 click. What would be easier? What would be easier? I want to try this. The square root of 12 a to the fifth b to the one, that's times, times, times eight, times a to the sixth, times b to the fourth. OK. So everything is multiplied. I can change order. There's no problem. I'm going to put the numbers together 12 times 8. I'm going to put the A bases together. A to the fifth. Times A to the sixth. And put the B bases together b to the 1 times b to the 4th. Eight times 12 is 96, I think. 12 times 8 is 96. Of course, I prefer to break this down, the numbers. So since 12 is three times four, and eight is four times two, that's easier to me, I think, than breaking down 96. You can see, Right offhand, four times four, that's four squared. That's 16. That is a perfect square. But, this, because I can see the future a little bit, this is easier if I combine them. This will be A, to the five plus six. When you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. And the B's won't necessarily be easier, but I'm gonna do it anyway to be consistent. So. Let me scroll up. I'm 
could have four squared times three times two, which is six, times a to the eleventh power, times b to the fifth power. And now, this is what I'm going to do. Square root of four squared, square root of six, square root of a to the 11th, and the square root of b to the fifth. And work on each of these separately. Well, the square root of four squared is four. Square root of six, there's one, two, and one, three in there, no perfect square. So four times the square root of six is what the number parts come out to. Now here is a really good trick. Using this rule backwards, The square root of a, now remember this is a two. I'm gonna to explain to you first why we need to do what I'm about to do. I'm gonna come over here. a to the 11. This is the square root of a to the 11. And that's the index. Usually it's invisible. That gives me a to the 11 over 2, which is a to the 5.5. Either way you look at it, 5.5. Either way you look at it, 5 does, 2 does not go evenly into 11, period. So a to the 11 does me no good. However, what is the biggest number smaller than 11 that 2 will go into evenly? 12. No, that's bigger than 11. Oh, smaller, or oh, 10. 10, good. I can write that a to the 11th as a to the 10 plus 1. You'll see why in a minute, but for now, and b to the fifth is the same thing. Two will not go evenly into five, but it will go evenly into four. So see, I, I didn't really have to put those together, but I did to be consistent. So now this is gonna be the square root of b to the four plus one, which will give me four times the square root of six times the square root of 10. Uh, no, ignore that, I didn't say that. Times the square root, I'll deny it to my last day, a to the 10 times a, times the square root of a, to the one times the square root of b to the fourth times the square root of b to the one. Anything with a one power is not coming out, but this, the square root of a to the 10th power is going to be a to the 10 over two which is a to the fifth. And the square root of a of, of b to the fourth is going to be b to the four over two, which is b to the two. That's b, b to the two. So here's what I have here, and I'm almost done. I have four times the square root of six, 
times a to the fifth times the square root of a to the one times b squared times the square root of b. Everything is still multiplied. This is four times the square root of six times a to the fifth times the square root of a times b squared times the square root of b. As long as, it, as long as everything is multiplied, I can move them around. So I'm going to bring everything that's not under a square root radical out to the front. That will be four, a to the fifth, b to the two or b squared. And everything under a radical, I'll multiply together and leave under the radical. Well, okay, I'm gonna go to an extra step right now. a to the six times uh, the square root of six times the square root of a times the square root of b. And since all of these are square roots, all I have to do is combine them under a square root radical for a to the fifth, b to the two times the square root of six a b. Now that's a lot. You have to kind of stop and think about it and not move fast. Moving fast is my downfall. Let me put a blue box around that. The problems that come before this, like this, and like that, they're easier versions of this problem, which is why I wanted to make sure I did this problem on the recording. Now, the more you learn, the more you get used to doing this, the fewer steps you have to go to. But more steps is better when you're beginning, I think. Although I can certainly be wrong. Okay, it is time to go. So I hope this helped. Um, I have a meeting up at the school, but when I get home, I'll put the, uh, the video up and the notes up and they'll be ready for you. So see you later. Bye bye. Thank you, ma'am. Have, have a good day. day. You too. Thank you, have a good day.